Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again, and welcome to part eight of going through this June 2017 paper two um, GCC for the maths paper by AQA. Now, if you haven't already, definitely check out the other parts um, because we go all the way up to question 17. So, in this video, we're going to go up to question, well, we're going to start from question 18. So, the diagram shows a rectangle with uh, the diagonal drawn. The given expressions for the measurements are in centimetres. Work out an expression for the area of the rectangle in centimetres squared. Give your answer in its simplest form in terms of y. So first thing to note about this question, right, is that it seems really easy at first because the area of any rectangle is the length times its width. So we just need to do the area is equal to x multiplied by 2x and that's going to give us 2x squared. So you might think, oh, job done. But it's the fact that the question is asking us to give it in terms of y that makes this tricky, because y is the diagonal. So you might think it's not anything to do with the area, because the area is the length times the width. Well, in actual fact, we can express the area in terms of uh, y by using Pythagoras' theorem, because here we've got a right angle triangle with the hypotenuse of 4y and the uh, two shorter sides as the length and width of the rectangle. So we can actually use Pythagoras' theorem, right? So Pythagoras' theorem states that um, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So that means that the two shorter sides squared, so x squared plus 2x squared is equal to 4y squared, um, sorry, squared on the uh, outside of the brackets there, 4y squared. So then we can sort of expand these brackets almost and do a little bit of collecting like terms. 2x squared is equal to 4x squared is equal to 16y uh, squared. So here we can say that 5x squared is equal to 16y squared. So x squared is equal to 16 over 5 y squared. Now you might say, well, how is that going to help us? Well, actually we can sub it in. Earlier on, we worked out that the area is 2x squared, two lots of x squared. And here we know that the uh, that x squared is equal to this. So actually the area is equal to two lots of x squared, but this is x squared. This thing here we've just worked out is equal to x squared. So actually we can say it's two lots of 16 over 5 y squared, which is 2 times 16 is 32, so 32 over 5 y squared in this case. So only through sort of rearrangement we get this um, get this really funky uh, fraction um, which has the value in terms of y and that is the right answer. It's just 32 over 5 y squared. So I really like this question because it combines the idea of rearranging formula, making, uh, diff you know, changing the subject of the formula with Pythagoras' theorem with area of a rectangle. So yeah, a very interesting question because on the face of it, it seems very easy to give the area um, as an expression. But actually when it asks for it in terms of y, that's when the difficulty of the question increases, which is why it's on the back half of the um, further maths paper. So hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, I like that question. Let's move on. 19. Here is a sketch of y equals sine of x between 0 and 360. A, uh, alpha is an acute angle measured in degrees. Sine of alpha is k, where k is a constant. Write uh, the answers to each of the following in terms of k without involving trigonometric functions. Sine of 180, take away a. Okay, so they tell us that a is an acute angle measured in degrees. So a has got to be somewhere between 0 and 90, right? a has got to be between uh, these two values. Now, if you imagine, I don't know, for example, let's say alpha was 20, which might be somewhere here, right? And you, you get a value k off this. Well, 180 minus that is actually going to give you the same value because the sine curve is perfectly symmetrical about 90 degrees. So whether you go 
from 0 that way or 180 that way, if it's the same value, which in this case it's alpha in both cases, you're going alpha forwards from 0, alpha backwards from 180, therefore you are going to get the same value. So this has to be k as the as the value um, in terms of in terms of k. Now for the next part, if scroll down, 360 minus alpha. Well, here, let me just uh, rub out some of this. Now, in this example, 360 minus alpha. Well, if you imagine alpha was 20, for example, and we're going back from 360, the amount of alpha, and we read off the value. Well, actually, it's the exact same value as this, but reflected, right? It's, the, it's upside down. So if this has a value of k, then this must have a value of negative k, because it's the perfect mirror image. It's almost like you've taken the um, original curve from 0 to 180, you've moved it to the other side, and then you've flipped it over like that. Um, so you get negative k for that value. So if I scroll down, I'm going to say that this value is negative k. And part C then, work out the value of cos of a, um, given your answer. Now, this involves an identity right, that you will probably be aware of. The identity is that sine squared of any angle plus cos squared of any angle is always equal to 1. Identity. Um, there, it's very famous. We can rearrange this for cos, right? So we can say that cos of any angle is equal to the square root of 1 take away sine squared of the angle. Okay, so sort of with me so far. Well, we know that sine of alpha is, is k, so if I want cos of alpha, then it's equal to the square root of 1 take away, well, it's going to be alpha squared, right? Because here we've got, um, we're told that earlier in the question, sine of alpha is k, so this is going to be, oh, not alpha squared, k squared is what I meant. It's going to be k squared. There we go. So that means we could just leave it as that because it, it that is literally uh, the answer not involving any trig because we've substituted out sine squared theta for, for k. So we can literally write the answer as the square root of 1 minus uh, k squared. Now you could, if you wanted to, um, factorise this because this is dots. So it could be 1 plus k, uh, 1 minus k, dots, difference of two squares. I'll shorten it to dots. Um, you could write as that, the square root of that, okay, and that would be identical, but um, not really necessary because there's no cancellation that can, that can happen here because these are different brackets and you can't square root them. So um, that would be totally fine to leave the answer like that. So just this question is just testing whether you understand um, how to find other trig values, but they haven't given you the value. They've just stated it's k, some number, but they haven't given you it, but they would expect you to sort of go through the same process um, as if you were trying to actually find other values for, for trig functions. So let's move on. Question 20. Two circles overlap. A, B and E lie on the circle with centre O and B, C, D, E lie on the other circle. A, O, B, C and A, D are straight lines. C, D is equal to C, E. Angle B, A, E is X. Wow, so lots of stuff going on there. Give a reason why B A E is equal to 90 degrees. So B A uh, B E A is 90 degrees. So they're asking why is this 90? Well, it's just because given the circle theorem, it's opposite a diameter, right? B A is a diameter of the circle because it goes all the way through the circle through its center. So the reason why B E A is 90 degrees is because it's opposite um, the diameter of the circle. Um, so I think the, the the phrasing of this really you want to say is angles have tended at the circumference. Uh, angle. Oh, let me get my black pen. Angle sub tended at the circumference. opposite 
the diameter is always 90 degrees. Now this is actually known as Thales theorem, right? It's never, I never really hear people describe it as Thales theorem, but it is, and it's actually the first ever a theorem named after somebody. So it was the first theorem in mathematics that was named after somebody. Uh, Thales of Melentus was a Greek mathematician who um, who proved, was the first one to prove it. So um, it's named Thales theorem, but no one ever calls it that, which is a, such a shame for, um, like I said, the first ever theorem named after somebody. Prove that DCE is equal to two x okay, for max. So. Here, there's, there's obviously going to be some bits that we'll have to work out along the way. There's got to be a reason why the question has asked us to work out the... Well, explain why that the angle is 90 from earlier. So, here, let's look back at our diagram. So that we know is 90. Okay, if this angle is 90, then this angle here, which I'm going to use a different colour, just so that they all sort of stand out a little bit, this angle here must be 90 take away x, right? Because it's opposite, well it's angles in a triangle add up to 180 um, and so therefore you can work out that this must be 90 um, take away x because that's already 90 degrees, you subtract them from 180 so that must be 90 minus an x. So the, the, the angle remember that we're trying to work out along the uh, eventually is prove that DCE is 2x. We've got to prove that DCE, so this angle here is what we want to work out. I'm not going to call it x obviously, that would be a very silly idea. So let's call it, um, I don't know, theta is the angle we want to work out. So let's try and get to those to that stage then. Well, if this angle here is 90 take away x. Sorry, I've just realised that actually the angle we're trying to work out is DCE. So it's this angle up here, sorry. DCE is this, this angle here, is what we want to work out. Well, we can actually work out... Um, this angle here, if I get a different coloured pen, this angle here, well that's on a straight line, 180 take away this, so that's going to be 90 plus x for this angle here. And then we've got a cyclic quadrilateral going on with um, these sides here. So angles that are opposite each other in cyclic quadrilateral must add up to 180. So this angle down here, right, C, D, E, uh, must be 90 take away X, right, because op these two angles that are opposite each other must add to 180. So this must be 90 minus X. And here we've got an isosceles triangle, this side here and this side here are the same. So therefore this must be 90 take away X. And finally, if this is 90 take away x, this is 90 take away x, then this triangle here will start up to 180. So 90 take away x plus 90 take away x plus theta, the, the angle we want to work out, is equal to 180. Then through rearrangement, negative 2x plus theta is equal to 0. So theta is equal to 2x. So d c e is equal to 2x. My apologies for labour at the wrong angle, but we uh, I quickly realised my mistake. So uh, DCE is 2x, as shown. And that is it for that question. So I'm just going to put as shown. Obviously, this would be a double page spread and you would write out all the working out there, but obviously I have sort of, instead of having to flick back and forward, I've sort of just kept it all on this page. But hopefully that's that sort of makes sense. It's just a... It looks like a really, really complicated question, but actually, through just taking it step by step, if you get the angle labelled right, that is, you can uh, you can answer this question um, just by following sort of simple steps to get to the the final goal. It, there's a lot of different rules playing here. You know, angles on a straight line, angles on a cyclic quadrilateral, angles at right ang uh, opposite um, a diameter uh, a right angle. Um, We've got angles in a triangle, isosceles uh, triangles going on here. Lots and lots and lots of different rules going on. So you just have to be sort of aware that, at GCSE further maths especially, you, you will be asked to 
draw upon everything that you know to answer one question. So, yeah, a really uh, interesting question, that one. Right then, I'm going to leave it there for, for this part, just to try and keep it somewhat reasonable uh, in, in length, but hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this video. If you have, then definitely check out all the other videos. But all I want to say is thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic